Hey and welcome back to Stories Untold. This is the last episode which I hope ties everything together because they've, they've been doing so well so far. I'm very curious to see how that... Look around, go to open... Yeah, yeah, we, we got that. Ooh, big alien tentacle thing in the last one. But we ended in... It looked like the wallpaper from the room we... From this room. And was it all the same guy, Mr. Asian James? I think that's enough of that for now. Okay. Thanks. I suppose. You're quite fond of this show, aren't you? Stories untold, videotape. Number puzzles. Okay, come on. Let's get you down to the observation room. I am being wheeled. Wheeled along. This place must be starting to feel like home to you. No, probably not. Don't worry. I'll try and get you out of here eventually. Eventually, it's also not very reassuring Just here. Idea. And there's a camera with a very bright light. And a tape okay. recorder. Are we through in the next room? Just relax and we'll get started in a moment. What's happening? What's going on? Can I click stuff? Right, Mr. Asian, now are you ready? Just hit record on the tape deck in front of you when you're ready. Okay, I guess we're ready. This is subject 12198623, new session entry. In 1986, we have myself, then. Dr. Alexander, leading, and in a room we have our patient, Mr. James Asian. As we know, James has recently recovered from a two week coma following his accident. In our last three sessions, James's attempts to recollect events of the accident seen him merging his memory with his imagination. These episodes have always ended in panic, and we've had to terminate the session abruptly. Let's try and do this one better, James. So when you're ready, let's bring this back. I know how difficult this must be, but you can do this. James. It's time to remember. Oh, please don't go. Oh, it was all in your head. It's, it's your mind. It's like a conscious black box. It's that thing again. I can show you your memory. There's stuff coming down the walls. Look into it. Yikes. Okay. interacted with you daily, encouraging you to wake. Your family would do number puzzles with you. Anything really to bring you back. People needed answers, James. Do you remember? I have another signal here for you, James. It's at 5610FM. You can't miss it. So that's the number puzzles again. Let's switch it on. Okay. Five six one zero. And up we go. Oh, a bit too far. Oh, oh come on, gosh. Okay, okay, okay. Nope. Almost. Ah, no, wrong button. Sorry. Type in the numbers, James. 
this is 20F, 12, 19, 86, 23, 04. Type in the numbers, James. You gotta see this. You gotta see this. This is 20F, 12, 19, 86, 23, 04. Type in the numbers, James. You gotta see this. This is 20F. 12, 19, 86, 23, 04. Type in the numbers, James. Code word report. This. this is 20F. 12, 19, 86, 23, 04. Type in the numbers, James. Let's see what this is. Guess. Oh, report 12, of traffic accident. 19, 86, Oops, we want to use this one. Type in the Vehicles change. 2, 2386-2205, Pleasant Hill Forest 12, Road, 20F, 86, fatal accident. 23, James Asian, 04. injured. Type in the Blah blah blah. Whoops, sorry, that yes. was the this City is Wilson, blah 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 blah. Sedan blue. 19, no passengers arrived on scene to discover two cars that had been involved in a near head on collision. Mr. Asian found lying down outside his vehicle with head injuries. An ambulance was immediately called. His passenger was trapped in the vehicle in critical condition from wounds sustained in the collision. The driver of the blue blue sedan, Mr. Hennings, was found dead on arrival. It was noticed that there was a strong smell of whiskey from the driver and an empty whiskey bottle on the passenger seat. Mr. Asian was questioned on scene. He described an oncoming blue sedan being clearly out of control, which he swerved to avoid. Mr. Asian's passenger was his sister. The driver of the blue sedan is an ex-police officer of 20 years. Oh no. And was his sister, so his sister's dead as well? And and that's why the creepy family home thing? Sister's room's blocked off? Because sister is... Wilson Police Department road traffic report file. Okay. 86-23-04. Type in the numbers, James. You gotta see this. This is 20F-12-19-86-23-04. Um, zoomy, zoomy, in we go. Type in the numbers, James. You gotta see this. This is 20F, 12, 19, 86, 23, 04. Type in the numbers, James. Number vehicles, 2. This is 20F, 12, 20F, fatal accident. 19, Empty whiskey, out of control. Uh, okay. Type in the numbers, James. You gotta see this. This is 20F. 12. Whoops, wrong, wrong button. You cannot use tab here. Zero, four. Type in the numbers, James. You gotta see this. This is 20F. 12. 19. 8. Yep. Analyzing file. Find the signal, James. Listen to the voices. Audio you archive have to reporting. Find it, James. Finally. Officer Williams interview seven thousand FM. Uh 
Okay, here we go. It's not like it. At all. I've worked with Officer Hennings for six years and not once have we even talked about alcohol. Drunk driving. He, he was a father, a husband. He was fine. No way he caused this. It's him. This Haitian guy. He's got something to hide. I like Ficus on. Okay, we've got something to hide. Do we? This doesn't make sense to you. You step out into the hospital ward, only it seems abandoned. Your vision is blurry. This is the room with the tape recorder. And the camera. And a plant. Okay. So we were drilling our own heart. Driving home, don't have that fifth pint. You tense up, someone else is here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tense. I mean, we can't go that direction. It's, it's, it's the bed's fallen over. And there's drippy, creepy sounds. And it's very dark. I don't like this at all. There's a light on in there, though. Oh, no, I can hear my heartbeat. And there's a key. You grab the keys from the table. They weigh heavy in your hand. They did weigh heavy in your hand in the first one. Okay. Where's the note we're going to find? Are we going to find a note? There's the wheelchair. Comb award. Oh, you can go in here. You only cut, caught a glimpse of the room. You guess that's why there's no detail in here. Um, okay. You spent most waking moments in here. Fly safe. Dreaming Greenland. Futura, the house abandoned. Number puzzles. And the show that we kept watching. Okay. So, was this all an elaborate construct in his mind? Another door you never opened. You don't know what was in there. Are we going to find ourselves in the coma ward now? Uh, let's see. The waiting area is dark, but you feel a presence right behind you. There's nobody behind us right now. Someone breathes on your neck, standing over you. No. Um, let's try this door first. Locked. Locked. Try this door. Locked. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. You feel dread in the pit of your stomach. Yes, I do. It's the light. Can't we, can't we go there? Whoa. Okay, we have a 22-year-old male just brought in from a vehicle collision. He was awake and mobile at the scene, but collapsed on arrival to the emergency ward. The other passengers died in the accident. I'm getting no pulse. Prepare for defib. Amp charge full to 10 and give me 100 joules. Come on, 100 joules. Charge amp full to 10. Oh my god, we have to do the thing ourselves. What are we doing? Um, amp, how is...
Yeah, that's the J's, that's the jewels. Oh my god. Oh. Okay. Can we get this on the screen, please. Oh, then we do have, do have to switch the camera on. Oh my god, it's... Yep, that's, that's not disturbing at all. And now... Come on, 100 jewels, charging up full to 10. Okay. Yes. Am I missing something again? I think that's four to ten, hundred jewels. Come on, hundred jewels, charging up full to ten. I'm just switching everything on. But we don't need the drill. drill. Yeah, we didn't have to switch everything on. Clear. Beep. No reaction from first stage. Let's try higher. 200 joules. Keep the amp charged at 10. So now we're trying to keep myself alive. 200 joules. Keep the charge at 10. Let's go. Whoops, sorry, I'm not, not fast enough. Okay, go. Clear. Okay, we have a reaction of some sort here, a weak signal. Let's keep going. Increase again. 360, charge full. Okay, 360. Come on, 360, hurry. Sorry. Clear. Well, would you look at that? It seems we have a pulse. Rhythm is stable. We need to run an x-ray right away. X-ray. Where are we with that x-ray? Let's get it going now, please. Okay, going. <sighs> Looks like an intracerebral hemorrhage. We need to drain this now to relieve pressure. Prepare for trepanation. Oh, <gasps> they're the drill, please. drill in your head. The drill, please. It's it's on. Mr. Asian, you've made excellent progress. You're doing great. We need you to stay calm and try to relax. Well, we go through the next step. Oh! We're going to attempt to alleviate some of this discomfort. That's what they said earlier. Now, not only is tonight New Year's Eve, but tomorrow you leave on a six month trip abroad with friends. Mum, Dad and your sister Jennifer have decided to throw a party to celebrate it all. The house is full. You're in the living room and as usual you don't recognise a soul. Look around. The room is full of chatty strangers, mostly friends of Mum and Dad. There's a door to the hall. Go to door. Oh, sorry, didn't understand. Uh, open door. Go to hall. You push through the crowd into the hallway. The hallway is as welcoming as ever, only this time the folks have put a great big banner up across the main hall. 
half-finished drinks are abandoned in all, on almost every horizontal surface. The stairs lead up, although the party is firmly downstairs. Go up the uh, stairs. As much as you'd love to. You promised you'd stay downstairs with the party. Look around. Same as ever. Stairs, door to the living room, and door to the kitchen. Go to kitchen. They say all the best parties are in the kitchen. That's where the food is. The kitchen is full of people and loud. There are drinks and food on the table and the party is in full swing. Dad has cooked a ho hog roast, which sits proudly on the table, although no one is eating it. Look at roast. It looks great. Use roast. <laughs> I don't know. Eat roast. Maybe later. Uh, look around. There is a utility room and writing on the wall. Also, Jen is here signaling you. Read writing. Happy New Year, 1986, on another banner. Weird place to hang it. So this is before the accident. Uh, go to Jen. You push through, apologizing over and over. You get to Jennifer. Jennifer was one of the code words as well. You hug, you're going to miss each other. You thank her for the party. She asks if you're enjoying the party. Yes. You tell her it's great, even though you don't really know anyone. She tells you to enjoy anyway and to loosen up. She asks you to get her a drink. Get a drink. You pour Jen a drink and one for yourself too. There's never an awkward silence with Jennifer. She always has a question. She asks if you have everything sorted for the big trip. Yes. You tell her yes. You have packed everything with plenty of room to spare. Another hug. Your family have really gone out the way to make this trip happen for you. It might be what you need to get some perspective and maybe not fuck up so much. She's going to miss you. You're going to miss her. She walks away. Jen has disappeared into the crowd. You are left standing, nodding and smiling at the approving faces. There's so much to do for this move. You can't mess it up. But first, a drink. A drink. You pour and down another drink. Anything to move the night along. Oh, so he was drunk driving. Ah, look around. The room is full. There's a utility room and writing on the wall. Go to utility room for some reason. Because we can. You open the door and peer in. You're never allowed in here normally. This is where dad keeps his fine wines and whiskies. Ceiling to floor axe, a collector, although he does actually drink them too. There's a bottle with a ribbon around it and a card. Read card. You pick up the whiskey and the card. It's your dad's handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything you've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25-year-old double, ma ma double malt. You shouldn't really, but you have to try it. With your whiskey in hand, you take in the room about you. There must be hundreds, no thousands of wet pounds worth of drink in here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. Go to dad. I'm sorry. Go to kitchen. You head back into the kitchen, clutching your new best friend. You stumble out of the utility room and back into the kitchen. That is one strong whiskey. You take another swig and give the thumbs up to dad across the room. He nods and winks. Go to dad. Ah, uh, look around. Busy and noisy. We'll need to find somewhere quieter. Go to hall. You go back out the hallway. A few bumps and laughs on the way through and you make it to the hall. You stop dead in your tracks. It's Jen, covered in blood. Look at Jen. She's staring straight at you. No one else notices. Go to Jen. Blood is dripping down her face. It's mixing with tears. Oh my god, what do we do? Talk to Jen. I'm sorry, I don't understand. And it, it, oh, that, that's creepy. Look at Jen. 
I'm sorry, I don't understand. That's even bigger on the screen. Look around. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Oh no. What do I do? The light's flickering. Get out. <gasps> That's her face on the screen. Oh no. Apologize. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't understand. We tried our best, Mrs. Asian, but her injuries were too severe. No, I don't understand. I was just talking to her. I'm afraid Jennifer passed away before we could get to her in surgery. We did the best we could. I am so sorry. Where is she? Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Asian, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. Let me talk to her. Now. I'll arrange for you to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. I don't want to see him. Oh no! You are standing in the hallway. Something has stopped you in your tracks. While searching your mind, your sister interrupts. She waves her hand in front of you and asks if you can drive her home. You still feel out of sorts. Those words echo. No. I'm sorry I don't understand. Answer. Yes. Uh, look at Jen. She's waiting patiently for that ride home you'd promised her. Uh, go to Jen. Look around. As our four back doors to the kitchen and living room lead from here while stairs take, take you up. Go upstairs. You'd love to call it a night, but Jen is waiting patiently. Go outside. There's no point till you find those car keys. Oh. Um, go to living room. You sure your keys are in the living room? The living room is a much more relaxed atmosphere compared to the kitchen. Various guests are sat on the chairs having civilized conversations. There's a coffee table in the middle of the room. Your mum is pouring a drink at the drinks cabinet. Uh, look at coffee table. Maybe the keys are there. Drinks on coasters. Little, like proper civilized people. You can't see your keys. Go to mum. Uh, look at drinks cabinet. Your mum's collection of wines and spirits. Definitely no keys in here. Look around. Coffee table, a drinks cabinet. One of the chairs is overflowing with jackets and coats. Look at chair. Friends in conversation, jackets and coats everywhere. Look at jackets. You search through all the jackets and coats until you find yours. Aha! Car keys in the pocket. You grab both. Go to hall. Keys in hand, you head back into the hall. Jen thanks you for helping her out. She's work in the morning and no one else is in any fit state to drive. You can handle it though. You know the road like the back of your hand, don't you? Yes. Uh, go outside. You open the front door and walk out into the freezing night. The cold air hits you. You're glad you have your jacket with you. There's a dusting of snow around you as you step down from the porch. The yard extends around the back of the house and the car sits at the front of the house. Go to car. You fumble with the car handle, confused until Jen tells you maybe use the key in your hand. Use key. Fumbling with the car keys, you eventually get the door open and climb inside. The car is freezing. As you fumble around with your seatbelt, your sister opens up the car glove box and hands you a note and the key that was inside. She tells you that it's for when you return. Read notes. The note is from your dad and reads, Hi son, Hi, son. hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to fire up the generator around back to get power and lights on. Also, found something in the attic for you. It's in your room. Enjoy. Yup. 
car is freezing. It's time both you and Jen have your seatbelts on and are ready to go. It's time to go. Go. Drive. The car doesn't move, given that the engine isn't actually on. It's like you've never driven before. Oh my god, we have to do start car. You try to turn the ignition with sheer willpower despite holding keys in your hand. We are very drunk. Put key in ignition. It takes a number of attempts, but you eventually slot the key into the ignition. Start car. You turn the key in the ignition and the car roars to life. Drive. The car squeals but stays stationary. Jen suggests releasing the brake, giving you a wide-eyed stare. Get out of the car, Jen. You very hesitantly release the handbrake. Now we want to drive. You put the car in gear and pull out the driveway like a first time driver. You really shouldn't be driving. You, I am driving very drunk on the road towards the town where your sister stays. Jen started dozing off as soon as the journey got going. This shouldn't take long. You come to a junction. Is it left or right? You can't remember. Right. Go right. You don't want to, but you had better ask Jen for directions. Wake Jen. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Ask Jen. She grunts and throws her arm to the left. It's left. Of course it's left. Go left. You turn the car left at the junction and accelerate off. Confident that you're on the right road now, you loosen up and put your foot down on the accelerator. You feel powerful as the engine roars at your command. Jen sits up in her chair and clutches your arm. She asks you to slow down. Slow down. That's not what really happened though, is it? You're all over the place, James. Pull over. Jen is hitting your arm and yelling at you. Crazy sister. Strange. There's a set of headlights coming directly at you, but really slow, like slow motion. Stop. You try to react, but your body isn't responding. There's nothing you can do to stop this. There's no way to control it. The lights merge with your car. The outside James, sake, pull over. joins the inside. The whole world around you begins to scream. James! And that's how you killed your the sister. Moment, wasn't it, James? The moment you lost it all. Your sister. Your parents. Yourself. And then you made it worse. Go on. Show us what you did. You wake up in the car. Your world is upside down. Your seatbelt struggles against gravity, trying to hold you in your seat. An impact into another car has torn a hole in the chassis. Poisonous fumes fill in, spill into your car from the engines. You are in grave danger. You have to get out of here. And then we've got the orb again. What's it, but we can't do anything with the orb. Okay, get out. You can't move, your seatbelt is still in place. Undo seat belt. Uh, loosen seat belt. Take seat belt off. You release yourself from the seat. Gravity takes over as you slump onto the roof of the car. Get out. You squeeze through the wreckage and fall to your knees on the ground next to your vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. Your head is throbbing. A blue car is smashed into the passenger side of your car. Your life cannot be ruined by this. You're standing, holding your whiskey and your dad's note and flashing lights are approaching at a distance. Go to car. What car? The other blue car or yours? Go to other blue car. Because he puts the bottle in there, the door is jammed. You don't have time for messing around like this, James. Open door. What car? Uh, blue car. Open. Go to blue car. 
You don't have time for messing around like this. Look around. The go-to. A crash site. Smoke billows from the crash car to the sky above. Exterior lights flicking on and off. Look at blue car. The hazard lights are blinking and fumes arising from the engine. Through the smashed windows you can see the motionless driver. Go to window. Uh, look at driver. It's an older man. His body is slumped, his face is bloodied. Look at window. Sorry, I don't know what that you're looking at. Uh, go to driver. Uh, look at bottle. Use door. Use blue car door. Blue car. Look around. Look at my car. There is no going home in this. The symbols and writing on the car are barely visible anymore. See, that's, that's going back to that one with the alien orbs and things. Look at Jen. Sorry, I don't know what you're looking at. What do I do? Use whiskey. Yes, good James. What exactly do you want to do with the whiskey? Drink. We can't drink whiskey. <laughs> Put whiskey in blue car. With the lights approaching closer, you begin to hear this, the shrill of their sirens. You simply cannot go to jail for this. You clean the bottle to remove your connection with the whiskey. Then, very deliberately, spill the remainder of the bottle's contents on the driver and you toss the incriminating evidence onto his passenger seat. Oh, that's the police lights. A circle of flashing lights surround you, illuminating the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people all staring. One figure steps out, a silhouette, and walks towards you. Look at figure. The silhouette is a police officer and in uniform, he beckons you to approach. Go to police officer. As you approach the man, the pulsating lights around you get dimmer and dimmer while the pain in your head increases. I know, you. I know you're tearing yourself apart over it, but no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. That accident, that poor man, me. You have to remember. But we don't want to remember. Fault. Yes. We get that I now. You did. How you left me there to protect oh. yourself. Planting evidence on some poor man. You went headfirst into that officer and wrecked all of our lives. No. And we couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. Save yourself. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Look at you now. Utterly consumed by it. Yikes. Say it, James. Something familiar about this bed. What they did to you. Say it. Tell them. Listen to yourself. It has to end, James. Doing what, though? Going back in this direction? Do you not understand? 
stun. Uh, more locked doors, like you can't go somewhere you've never been. This episode oh dear. you're having must come to an end. Oh dear. Yikes. Yikes, yikes. Make it stop, make it stop. Do you remember? Yikes. Now oh, we're gonna go back to the camera. Stop the session in the station. Dr. Alexander is always watching remotely. I don't know if anyone, I don't know. Go back to where we started. This is where we started. Put an end to this nightmare. Or it's not, it's the room we spent a lot of time in. It's there. Uh... You can do this, James. You can let go. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Seats for the visitors, not that you've ever had any. No. Okay, I'm guessing we're going to do all the fleshy lights in Horge. Observation. Cameras, hello thing. All of your episodes were recording to tape. This is the fourth. Oh, click. Well, I think we've made progress today, Mr. Asian. I guess we should tell the police what you've told us. Although I don't suspect they'll take you anywhere. I think you'll be with us for quite some time. Come on, let's get you back to your shows. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, that was really good. I mean, I'm, I tend to be a bit disappointed by the, you know, it was all in your head things, but it did tie it all, all up very well. And oh, that was a nasty way of coping with nasty things. Gah. Anyway, some very good storytelling, I think. It made me all tense, it made me jump, and it made me want to find out what happens next, which, you know, is how you keep these things interesting. Ah, now the cover's changed to Session 1 to 4, James Asian by Dr. Alexander. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please do subscribe and I'll see you for another video. Bye-bye. <laughs>